Hello all the YouTube chess lovers and thanks again for joining me, Steven Sturgill, on my chess TV channel here on YouTube. And once again we are going to cover some incredible lines in the Zamish King's Indian. So get your notepads out, get your chess sets ready, and let's get ready to rumble. Alright, as we know, the uh, starting tabia starts like this. And that signals entering the Zamish as opposed to a traditional King's Indian. For example, F4 would be the four pawns attack and the traditional King's Indian, etc, etc. And I'm not going to cover that here in this video. We're going to talk about the Zamish. And uh, from here, guys, uh, I'm going to share two different lines today and then maybe a third and a fourth, which are quite wonky. One of them is just simply spectacular, and I doubt you've ever seen anything quite like it, but let's get started. So, bishop d3, one of my favorite moves in the Zamish. Push d5. He's closing the center. Okay, this is a new line I discovered recently. So, knight h3 is the idea, and uh, black will often, but not always, bring that central knight down from the d7 square here to e5. We're going to bring this knight back to f2. And from here black will, at least in this case, retreat the f6 knight to back to d7. Bishop drops the deck down to e2. Knight comes over to b6. We play f4 here. A, a, excuse me, a4. And a4 is very, very common and useful in the Zamish. It, it's not that it does a whole lot in and of itself, but it just kind of ties black up there a little bit on the A and B files. Black kind of has to monitor that pawn becoming too active. And also, I want to point out that in the Zamish, the B2, there's always this beautiful resource of B2, B3, for example. We're not going to play that here. I'm just saying that this is an incredible resource in the Zamish. The B2, B3 is a very, very common, and it's a great idea uh, as well. Rook will often find its sweet spot on A3, controlling this entire rank. Well, to some extent, anyway, to pressurizing it at least. I think that probably controlling the entire third rank is uh, probably overstating the case, but... Seriously, though, uh, often a3 is a very, very powerful move in the Zamish with that rook. Ah, I hate that whistle. Uh, of course, this bishop is a gorgeous piece along this entire diagonal. And more than not, you will see the king castle short, king side. Ah, uh, oh, that whistle. Sorry about that. Uh, other times, occasionally, you will see in the Zamish the king castle. Uh, long, which is quite interesting, and hopefully I will make a video uh, for next time covering uh, uh, long castles in the Zamish, which is quite interesting, quite dynamic. But today we don't have time to cover all of that, so let's continue. Black wisely plays a5, stopping the advance of the a4 pawn. We're going to kick that knight with f4, my favorite move in chess. Knight goes back to d7. Castles. That's a strange looking move, but Black saw fit to play that knight back to b8. Queen to d2. That's another thing I wanted to point out, guys. The queen often loves coming to either the d2 square, the c2 square. Let me point that out. Here, 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 and here. These are the most powerful squares in general for the early to middle game in the Zamus for the for the uh, queen. These are just gorgeous, gorgeous, useful squares to be on. Often this bishop, of course, will be here on d3. In other cases, we'll seek to open lines or trade it off or even trade this bishop off on h6 or pressurize uh, g7. At any rate, just... Okay, this... 
It's a very useful move for the black plays here, uh, e5, and I can tell you that black does have other useful moves here in the position, but they're a little bit slightly w worse than playing e5 here. So, for example, uh, e6 is certainly an idea. That's, that's a good idea, and then we would probably play b3 here immediately. Uh, again, I pointed out earlier that b3 is extremely useful in the Zamish as we're sort of entering the middle game, I guess you'd say. That's, I think that's fair to say. Um, another good move Black has here at his disposal is bishop d7. Ah, get that off. And once again against this, uh, b3 is the move. So again, b3 is so, so strong and useful in this type of scenario. Uh, another good move is um, yeah, uh, knight a6 is another quality move that black has at his disposal here. And once again, you guessed that b3 is the move, so not a lot of theory to, to remember as far as this line goes you don't have to remember a bazillion different responses based on what black does it's pretty much i don't want to say set in stone but then you might see a type of couple moves like this for example et cetera, et cetera. i didn't work this line out guys i'm not going to spend too much time working on it Trade those guys off there, and already White is enjoying here in a just a delicious uh, about a 1.5 advantage, and we're gonna get these pawns rolling. I think I think probably uh, here G takes F5 is really really good, but it's showing that E takes X F5 is actually the best. Queen e2, uh, that's another very common move in the Zamish. You'll see the, the queen often loves to come either to queen, excuse me, either to e2 or e1. In many cases, even d1 is a very useful square in the Zamish. And sometimes e3, not, not as common. And then we'll see something like this, that knight gets active. Etc. 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 I'm not going to go too much further. Just demonstrating the power of this line in general. Yeah, and and white is just crawling all over black here, guys. White, black can resign. It's 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 a ridiculously bad position. Rooks are coming in, uh, in power. <laughs> that knight's gone. Etc. Etc. Okay. You get the idea. Let's 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 back it up. Where were we? I think it was yeah. So again here black played the best move, which is e5. We push f5, gorgeous move, and as you can see, this is opening up this entire I don't have a cursor to uh, lighten these ups like lighten these squares up like uh like the pros do, I'll just kind of use the queen as a massive cursor. This whole quadrant here is wide open to attack. And so from here, black takes, we take back on f5. Black takes with the bishop. And this is a very interesting move, just playing knight g4. And a knight backs up. And I know many of us wouldn't see the continuation here on our own, so that's the move. Looks rather bizarre. Uh, obviously, Black does not want to take here because that's not a pleasant situation to uh, invite, obviously, into the camp. Yeah, at, at all. It's just getting really bad. It's uh, 
white now is showing about a plus five advantage. Plus, it just went to plus six. And climbing. Rook a3. Again, we talked about that earlier. So common in the Zamish, that rook a3 idea. And here it's giving uh, a quality move is, is bishop takes f8, rh3 still winning, raf3 still winning. But by far the money shot here, guys, is rg3. No pun intended about the quarterback. Uh, that knight's gone. That rook's gone. Queen's scotching up to look at, to kiss that g7 square. Probably going to take f6, obviously, first. Okay, the queen's blocking that. Check. There's a disco check. Bye bye queen, and that's mate in 33. Lord have mercy. So let's go back. That's I just wanted to demonstrate. That's why black did not take there. Instead, black king goes to h8, and then knight jumps to f5. Obviously, hitting the bishop on g7. Black is pretty much compelled to take, and we take back with the rook. And then look at that. Look at that incredible invasion. Just a strong. Invasive queen and rook working in tandem. And here, guys, uh, I had previously played this move, but as it turned out, a little more finessing showed that queen g4 is much, much stronger in the long run. And we'll see why that is in a, in a minute. So, knight c8, queen drops back to h3, knight down to a6, bishop to g4. Looking for dastardly discos. Knight b6, knight e4, knight b4, rook h5. Absolute stranglehold on the h file now. f5. And I'm not totally sure that. I wouldn't hear it if I was just playing this over the board. I'd probably just smash a, uh, h7 in a heartbeat without even thinking twice. But in actuality, um, that's the money shot there. It takes f5. It's much stronger. And queen drops back to e8. We let's see. Is that really the best? I think so. Hmm. Well, that's really good for sure. I'm also seeing that bishop h5 is an excellent, excellent idea here. Um, knight g5 is, is very powerful. Let's see what that would look like. Obviously, setting up mate in one. Black is compelled to push that pawn. And now we get the earlier idea of smashing the 8th rank. Tickling the bishop. Queen drops back, drops down to protect it. Gorgeous move. Bishop uh, to g5. Kissing the queen. Knight comes over to secure. And we take that knight, knight it over again. Go ahead and grab the queen. Thank you very much. Rook f1. Knight takes g7. Interesting move. Wow, that was way, way classy. That actually guarded the then guard it, but I mean, it, it, it limits the scope of that rook to c8. It's not coming past that point because you've got this delicious move. And instead of taking there, white wisely moves into this attack formation. And that's all she wrote. That's mate. 
And that's made in 42, guys. So, of course, if we backed up, of course you could just take it. There's no shame in taking the rook there. And uh, we're going to make it do what it do. <laughs> and that's made there in 44. Uh, no harm, no foul. So that's a phenomenal line, guys. I wanted to share. And uh, let me briefly run back through it. We've got a lot to cover today, today's session. And probably, unfortunately, not going to be able to cover quite a bit of other material I wanted to go over with. But uh, there's always, hopefully, another episode in the future. So again, going to the starting tabia. And... I'm kind of going to blitz through this a little bit. And I love this logical sort of just opening of the position on the uh, on Black's King side. It's just phenomenal resource. Oops. And I'll show you what this. Well, no, I'll I'll come back in a minute. I don't want to lose focus. And of course, guys, um, most GMs would have already long since resigned as they would have calculated enough to know that they're just going down in, in flames. There's really little little point to fighting on, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, and of course, Queen could have just gobbled... Uh, I mean, you could have just gone Queen G7. That's mate. And of course, you could have taken the Knight with the Queen. And that's obviously. <laughs> uh, backing up to. I think it might have been. Right about here. Yeah, I initially played a slightly different line. I played this. And it's got most of the same ideas intact, just a slightly different move order. Um, it's very interesting to be sure. And then the queen is gone. Rook comes over, and it's just a really gorgeous, effortless mate. That's actually mate in 40. So that's a beautiful way to finish it. Okay, so going back. to show you a different line. Uh, if bishop t takes here, guys, I was wondering what would happen if bishop, if black just decided to take. And this is pretty much what quickly developed. You can see that white is still executing most of his dastardly evil ideas. With uh, effortless uh, abandon, <laughs> the queen is gone. Uh, that rook is gone in the corner. Again, a real GM would have, even an IM for that matter, would have long since resigned. This, this is just a ridiculous position. But you'll see the noobs online try to battle to the bitter end. You know, being down massive material and having like two pawns on the board, which is just ridiculous. I admire the fighting spirit, but it's just, come on, it's like face reality, you're done. So that line, guys, is mate in 45, I'm, I'm not going to focus on that line, just wanted to show that it doesn't help if black exchanges material there, the attack is so severe, it's just simply too late to counter it on the uh, king side. Uh, and you'll, you'll see that a lot, not only in the Zamish, but in many, many King's Indians, uh, black will just crash and burn, you know, within... 25 or 35 moves. Uh, it's not uncommon at all, especially amongst individuals that are less than, than prepared. Um, okay, so 
I did want to show one earlier uh, branch or variation. Where was it? I'm trying to remember. I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't quite remember, unfortunately. Well, we'll, uh. Okay, so guys, if you remember coming back to this move where uh, Black rerouted the knight up to uh, b6 and then, then kicked that knight back to d7, uh, I wanted to find out, because I think it's a fair question, what would happen if Black decided to take my bishop on d3 with check? And this is actually a really, really good move for Buck. It's uh, fairly tricky to handle this position for a win from here. So let's watch and learn together. So white castles. Uh, Buck plays a6. We play a4. Queen comes into a5. Um... I'm trying to remember what was the... Yeah, and then here, uh, a3 by far was the best move in the position. You could try that wonky bishop d2 idea, but it... I went through the line, it was really not um, convincing at all. So again, rook a3. Black centralizes rook e8. Queen c2. We talked about how the c2 square is very common for the queen. Okay, black wisely retreats the queen to c7. We push a5. Okay, black rook play comes to b8. Knight c3 goes to e2. Black knight comes to f6. And then uh, we play b3. Bishop d7. Knight d3. And here I don't. I had two lines here. I'm not quite trying to remember which one was best. I want to first. Let's see. I think it was this line that I ended up liking better. I'm not 100% positive. Bear with me for a second. I'm not going to annotate this guy, it's just kind of watch the screen. Now we kick the bishop with knight h1. Black opens the center, and we're obviously going to lose material here. That's quite a bit. We just lost two knights, but the the point is the attack now is very is quite severe on Black's king side. He has uh, now uh, no cover at all except for that knight. Bishop to c3 is extremely annoying <laughs> in, the, in the maximum. Knight comes to f6. Here I was wondering why this wasn't a good move. Oh, never mind. How embarrassing. I, uh, I should have seen that white will just take uh, en passant and that's checkmate. <laughs> so... There's no uh, no black pawn out there today, and that re there's no resource for that. So knight has to come to uh, f6, and uh, here obviously the bishop can just grab that that knight with check. Uh, but I also personally think that queen h6 check here is also very very strong. Why don't we take a look at that line and see how that would play out.
And I believe the Rook is going to now invade on the 6th rank, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And it's looking very unpleasant for Black, to say the least. It's like looking yeah, pretty much like an emergency. <laughs> A house fire. Hmm. It's an interesting move. I didn't think White was compelled to, to, to exchange here. I thought maybe, uh... I thought maybe Queen F4 looked quite playable. Or, or Queen... H4, perhaps? Hmm. That is interesting. Well, well, we'll just follow this logic for a second. So from here, Rick wants to come to E1. Now we have Rook E7 check. Okay, attacking the weakness on C5, but we first get central. Now C5 drops. Go back there, forming a battery. H4 check. G4 check. King tucks away. King getting active and also safer. Or G8. Pinning the bishop. Now, as you can see, we're going we're gonna to push these pawns. And uh, it's the beginning of the end now for, for black, unfortunately. Oh, wow. What a class. I would love to get that in over the board. What a classy... You know, we were always talking about rook lifts. I guess this is a rook drop on pre... Pinning the, <laughs> pinning the rook, exchanging itself so that that delicious c7 pawn will queen. What a money shot! Wow. Yeah, and now it's just all it's just all over, and the bishop's gone. Yep, queen can even just trade off there, and these tie fighter pawns are coming into the mix, and uh, that's all she wrote. So that would be mate in 88, and um, not maybe an easy win, but pretty sound, pretty much mostly in control most of that game, so let's go back, and I did want to... Yeah, also here, guys... Let's see. I think I looked at castles first. And I'll just briefly run through this line. I think also here, uh, knight d3 was an excellent, uh, if somewhat obvious, resource. Um, g4, it's giving us a 
A strong move. Let's check that out. That's a bit of an odd one. The idea is kind of intriguing, though. Because, uh, yeah, G4 is just a sitting duck, obviously. King gets very active up to G5. Getting kind of kicked around a little bit. Okay, well, it's an interesting line. I, I didn't work this line out, guys. Just kind of... So going back, that's not what I played in the game. I played... Uh, uh, H3, correct. And, uh... Got that escape square. King comes to G5. And, uh, as you can see, white is just absolutely squeezing black to shreds here. And you can just... That pawn is absolutely going to queen. RB, RB exchanged, of course, for the rook. Either or. In this case, it does queen. Could have been exchanged, but whatever. And, uh... That was an interesting uh, little tactic there to get rid of the uh, rook. And mate. That's mate in 74. I just want to show that this line is very versatile and it's just very rich and dynamic. There's so many ways to win playing the Zamish that it's it's almost sad for black. I think it's a reason a lot of King's Indian players don't actually play the King's Indian anymore because the Zamish in particular is a very, very hard weapon to even equalize in, frankly, in the King's Indian. I'm not saying don't play the kid, I'm just saying be aware that the, the Zamish is a very, very hard nut to crack. And it's a very, very dangerous weapon for white, uh, for sure. Let's see, going back, let's see. Okay, well, we, I think we covered most of those two lines that I wanted to talk about today. And then, um, going back... So I'm remembering a bishop e3 line. Oh, let me get back to the starting tab here. My apologies. Let me get back there. Yeah, this file is just ginormous. Uh, <laughs> it's just more than my brain can probably hold. Uh, okay, so here, let's see. I wanted to show you guys a bishop... Is it this line? I'm trying to remember. I don't remember for sure if this is one of the lines I wanted to go over or not. I don't think so. This is feeling like one of the bad lines that I, I went through. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's okay. We'll see. Th this, this one did feature uh, queenside castling. So let's see if this is... A line. I don't think this is a good line. I think I think I gave up. Yeah, I apologize. This is very similar to one that I did successfully work out on the uh, passing on the queen side. But yeah, we'll save that for a rainy day. I'll, I'll I'll find that for next time, guys. But let's just get back to let's see the starting tab. Yeah, I must have picked a wrong one somewhere. Let's see. Where was it? Okay, for sure I want to show Bishop G5. We, we talked about this in my last couple of Zamish videos. And, um... Yeah, Queen comes to D2. Rook comes to B1. We go ahead and force these guys off. B3, okay, A3,
Oops, I think I uh, totally went down another wrong alley, guys. Sorry about that. That's that's very similar. Yeah, I've got too many files here. I need to find some way of c clearly marking them. Uh, on the plus side, I found one of the cool lines I wanted to show you by accident. So sometimes bad roads lead to good roads. Um, I'm trying to remember this move. Let's see, Knight FD7. FD7. Oh, Lord. How do I find my way back? Uh, <laughs> that's... What was the move? Was it Bishop E2? F E2? Maybe this is the line. I'm not entirely sure. I think this is. No, let's see. Ah! No. Ah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not it. Uh. find my way back here. It's like a labyrinth that just doesn't end. <laughs> oh, wow. There's got to be a fouling system. I apologize, guys. Um, let me just manually go back and find it, and I'll just click on there. I've just got a like a terabyte of data here. And it's just very, very hard to sift through this. Okay, bear with me. I'm getting there. I hope. <laughs> okay, yeah. Knight F D seven. So G four has been played. Ah, yes, I see. I believe it is that this. Oops. Yeah, and then here. Ah, get back. There we go. Okay. Okay, guys. Sorry, I found it. So, from this starting position, the very, very wonky G4 has been played. This is identical to the starting Tabia in the Zamish, except that uh, G4 was played immediately kicking the knight back. And you're thinking, Steve, what is going on here? And this is a wacky, wacky move. And it is. But watch this. Bishop develops to G5 h6, bishop comes back to e3, knight c6, queen d2, e5, d takes e5, knight comes down, oh, wait a minute, I think I, no, that's not a, ah, yeah, I apologize. I'm sorry. I was supposed to push d5. <laughs> There's so many lines here, guys, it's hard to monitor. So, of course, I, I push d5. It comes down. Now, this is, the, this is the point I wanted to share with you guys. Queen side castling. It's not unheard of in the Zamish. Knight comes to c5. Quiet move. King over to b1. Black queen comes to h4. White queen goes to g2, a5, bishop f2, get out of here, h4, okay, there's the b3, the ubiquitous b3 in most Zamishes, okay, g5, takes, takes, knight plays c6, knight d4, Take back with the bishop. Take with the rook. 
black place, F5, and here guys, besides F5, uh, it's all losing by the way at this point for black. Uh, other moves are significantly worse. Uh, for example, if black here was to play rook b6 uh, or queen a5, those would both be poor choices. So he plays uh, f5 and we take on c6. Black finally comes into a5. We shore that up with queen c2. Bishop b6, knight b5, b takes c6, knight f6 check, king f7, rook h1, king e7, rook h7 check, king d8, queen h2, king c8, king c2 is a useful move here as well. Uh, rook just takes d6 is excellent. That's, a, that's an excellent move there. Now the king can come to c2. And etc. etc. Um, going back, actually, I played a slightly different move order in the game. I played king c2 first. Then, then rook takes d6. Bishop comes to d3. Rook a5. He crosses f5. Knight hops to d4 with the check. Rook takes back, queen check, king d1, and this was an interesting moment, guys. Uh, my my queen is gone, black queen is gone. Black now offering exchange of bishops, but rook h7 was stronger. Now the bishops come on, come off. Knight d7, rook f f8. Knight b6 check, king b8, rook hd7, rook c8, knight takes c8, king takes c8, rook h7, rook takes f3, rook d6, rook f1 check, king e2, rook f4, rook takes g6, rook f8, rook takes c6 check, king b8, g6, rook f8, rook e6, rook f8, g7, rook c8, rook e7, rook c7, g8 queen check, King a7, rook is changed on c7 check, king b6, rook b7 check, king a5, and finally, ah, uh, queen a8, checkmate. Alright guys, thank you for uh, bearing with me on that. I wanted to get the little bonus video in there showing that sometimes castling queenside is not at all a bad approach and it can absolutely win the ball game so the main other variation i'd like to share today just because it is absolutely extravagantly awesome <laughs> uh is is what i what i'm calling my wonky manual castle line and it kind of has to be seen to be believed i don't want you thinking it's just a lucky patser line so let's go find that um, okay, I'm, so many good lines here to show you guys, and I wish there was a better way to organize all this data in a way that made sense visually, where I could just access it uh, quite easily. Kind of like a, maybe a tree or something, I don't know. So I'm still not finding it. Bear with me. Got some way cool lines for sure. Uh, Ah yes, here it is. Six King F two. Um, yes, yeah, so right here, guys, at the starting tabia. This is the move, and I know you're thinking 
This is a crazy move, right? It kind of is. It's very unusual. I think, other than maybe Eventric, I'm not. I don't know of too many other Super GMs that would uh, trot this out in the classical chess game. But believe me, believe you me, this is the real thing. So let's watch how this develops. Black plays the very strong and sound C5. Um, we close the center, of course, which is by far my preference. Black plays A6. And I play the immediate G4. Uh, definitely hyper aggressive. Black Knight comes to D7. Uh, that is uh, b8 to d7. And money shot here, guys, is king quietly saunters over to g2. Very unimpressive. Black knight comes to b6. And we form this little trident phalanx cover with h3. White plays e6, challenging white's d5 pawn. We pin that knight with bishop g5. Queen comes to c7. White queen goes to d2. Bishop d7. a4. Bishop e8. a5. Knight bd7. Bishop h6, offering or looking for an exchange rather of bishops. Black wisely uh, postpones that for rook b8. We go ahead and take anyway. Best move in the position. King recaptures, of course. Knight g2. E takes d5. He takes d5 back. h5. Possibly a little bit too aggressive, but ordinarily a very strong sound move and not exactly a dangerous looking move for sure and white knight quite plays the rather uninspired knight c1 b6 white takes white the black queen takes back rook a2 guarding that pawn queen b4 Bishop e2, a5, b3, again, there's that b3, so common in the Zamish. King g8, rook e1 now, starting to get central. Rook d8, bishop d1. And already, guys, I can tell you that it's the beginning of the end for black. White is here enjoying a massive... 1.54 advantage that's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Black queen goes back to b6. White queen scotches into h6. Sneaks in rather or invades. Queen c7. f4. There it is. My favorite move. a4. And rook e7 here, guys, is just a nightmare on a stick. Knight takes back. Queen goes to b8. We sh we're shattering black's cover now. Black queen is gone. Black bishop hunting the knight. It's gone. Knight up to e4. e4. Check. Coming in with power. That, that knight is gone. <clears throat> And do you see it? Checkmate. That's checkmate, guys, in 41 moves. I cannot tell you what a awesome and a weird wonky line that this this proved to be. Um, going back here to pawn h5. Yeah. Uh, Black surely probably had a better move than that in the position. So in fairness, 
Uh, we could all finesse this line from here a little bit. Uh, in fact, I think B5 was much, much strong. B6 actually is probably even stronger. But having said that, uh, black is still losing very, very much so. Uh, after A crosses B and black recaptures, it's very, very reminiscent of the line that was actually played in the game. Here, for example, uh, again, rook A2. Here, rook, rook exchanges in A6. Knight over again to C1. Rook comes back to A2. B3 once again, as in as before. Bishop D3. And here there are several really, really good moves. Uh, Knight B5 is a good one. King H2 is excellent. Rook E1 is not bad. Bishop C2 is very, very strong. And um, F4 is, is most excellent as well in this position. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with F4. I just feel like it's the the right time to do that. Okay, H6 is an ideal by Cass here. Rook A3, stopping ideas of exchanges on B3. Knight 1 to E2, first rank to E2. Rooks doubling on the A file. Why Rook comes, I mean, excuse me, the uh, Knight from E2 hops to G3. Here, uh, Knight C E4 is excellent uh, and strongly winning. Knight G E4 is winning. Queen E3 is winning. But again, it's giving that F4 to F5 as the strongest in the position. We'll just go ahead and take a look at that briefly. Trades. Rook comes to E1. Again, there's that idea of Rook E7 in this particular line, which is just very, very dynamic and powerful. It's sort of a weird static move, but it's very, very positionally uh, powerful. There goes that knight. And there we are with a little disco d6. Check first. And we don't really care about that bishop because we still have a checking apparatus on g6. And we're going to gobble that one. White rook to e7. Idea obviously is pushing f6. As well, there's ideas and resources of knight uh, e2, uh, rook e3, etc., etc. So, yeah, there's the rook e3 idea. That rook's gone. Knight e4, knight f6, and it's looking truly, truly like the end is near. Okay, finally push d7. Check on e6. Coming around the mountain. That rook is gone. Queen. 
And that's made, guys. Made in 67. And that was with a much... You will, Y'all will admit, that was a much better move. So I don't want to be getting hate mail that, oh, you know, you, you let Black play a patzer move. Of course, they crashed and burned in your wonky line. No, that was a real quality line. I gave Black plenty of fair handshakes in that line, and it was not enough to stave off a very quick rapid mate. Again, this one was a little harder, mate in 67. Had to work for it for a bit. Uh, before we go, I think there's one other very interesting line I would like to share. Let's see, where was it? Mm. Yeah, and I'm sorry guys, just the amount of data that I'm having to sift through. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Yeah, I think this is another one. Bishop G5. Or did we already look at this, actually? This is not. I don't think this is this. This was part of the line I was looking for, but the problem is it branches off into too many directions. Let's see if I can sift through this. <laughs> Oops, no. Um, God, no, I just can't find it, guys. I'm sorry. This is just... <laughs> there's just reams of variations here in this particular file set. And I just can't tell where what goes anywhere. Let's see. Here's one line. Um, this was a really cool line. Let's see if I can track it backwards a little bit. And we will, this is a really cool line. Oh boy, let's see. Let me write this down so I can find it and track it. Let's see. Let's see, 12 was H3. If I go back from here, okay, 9 is Knight H5. Bishop H4. Okay, H6. 8 F4. Uh huh. Seven Bishop G five, okay. Knight B D seven. I think it's this one.
Yeah, yeah, this is it. Okay, so if you've... <laughs> if you can bear with me, this this crazy line here. Um, goes like this. From the starting tabula, we play bishop out to g5. And then it's d5. Bishop d3. Knight comes out to e2. We castle. Uh, and here, this was a key moment, guys. The bishop needs to come back to e3. Okay, the knight com comes coming around the mountain. F4. Take off those knights. A3. There's B3 once again. We're going to go ahead and trade with that pawn by playing the very aggressive G5. Uh, we're going to counter that with G3. Bishops are moving at the exact same angle. Uh, one square left. <laughs> we're going to take uh, towards the center again. And here, there were a couple other good moves, but I, I just thought, you know, how could I not play king h1 here? And just immediately ask black, what are you going to do about me just absolutely owning the, the g file? And curiously, instead of playing the rook over first, which I thought was stronger, they they played the uh, black played the bishop g g7. Okay, so rook g1, rook g8, knight d1, queen c7, bishop c3. And uh, instead of trades, which is not that good for black. <laughs> Knight f6 is much more solid. Knight e3, knight h5, f5, knight f6, knight g4, e5, knight exchanges on f6, b takes, bishop takes f6, queen h3. And here, guys, the average GM would just resign. That's, that's it. They don't need to see any more from here. White is now enjoying a plus 5.30 advantage bishop d2 bishop desperately trying to shore up h6 and stop ideas of g7 doesn't matter we're going to we're going to exchange there and we're going to take this pawn off on h6 goodbye rook skosh up there a little bit And bishop's gone. Queen is gone. And that's checkmate, guys. That is checkmate and 51 moves. <laughs> So I do apologize, guys. I've got too much data in this file, and thanks for bearing with me and letting me find some of these incredible lines to share with you guys. I hope I've given you a lot of food for thought. I'm probably not going to cover any more videos in the near future on the Zamish, so uh, go over my material. I, I hope it can enrich your chess and allow your understanding of the King's Indian and the Zamish in particular to allow you to have a lot of... Uh, winning winning games and some strong ideas uh, in our royal game so thanks guys for tuning in again hope you all had a very merry christmas and hope you have a happy new year be safe and if you drink please don't drive thanks so much guys bye bye